Hello everyone, this is Game Frost. In today's review, I will test out the new CPU cooler from Thermalright. Dubbed the Phantom Spirit 120SE, it has 7 heat pipes instead of 6 and comes with ARGB. Is this cooler good enough for an overclock i5 13600K? Let's find out. We all know how hot these new gen CPUs are. From AMD's AM5 socket to Intel's LGA1700, these CPUs will pump out so much power and heat if not configured correctly. As fast as they are, it requires adequate cooling to operate nicely. People may consider getting a decent AIO to fix the thermal issues because there may not be enough air coolers strong enough to handle these beasts. However, Thermalright came in and delivered something not only good in price, but performance. The Peerless Assassin became a hit with the PC market showing great results in most CPU heavy tests such as Prime95 and Cinebench. But enough talk about the Assassin, the Phantom Spirit is a slight upgrade over its predecessor. It's time to discuss more about it. When I went to Amazon to check out on this product, I only saw like 2 reviews at the time and one of them complained about high-pitched noises coming from the fan. The cooler I paid for was around $43, and at the time of writing this video, it is out of stock. But, I believe there should be more models available from different sellers. So, what do you get when you buy this product? Well, obviously, you get this box which shows the design of the Phantom Spirit. Unboxing it will give you two ARGB fans, one dual tower cooler with seven heat pipes, socket support brackets, some screws, thermal rights, thermal paste, and of course, fan splitters. What is it capable of, you might ask? Well, according to Thermalright, the copper base of the copper is pure copper nickel. Weighing in at 765 grams, it's not heavy despite its looks. In fact, it does look small to me. I guess I was used to the previous cooler which was an ID cooling SE224 XT. That cooler I would recommend for lower TDP CPUs such as an i3-13100 or 12100 or any Zen 4 Ryzen non-X CPU. Now for the fun stuff, installation. I took out my old cooler and cleaned the 13600K. The thermal paste I use is the Arctic MX4, which may be a little obsolete but it gets the job done. I just wanted to tell you all that I'm not using a custom ILM contact frame. The motherboard used for this review is the MSI Pro C690A DDR4 version. This gives me the ability to tweak the system at its full potential. After the installation process, turning it on gives us a working light show, and that is a good sign. I have spent a few days overclocking the system and figuring out the CPU's limit to the point where I settled with 5.5 GHz all core on the P cores and 4.3 GHz all core on the E core. As for the ring or cache ratio, I believe, it has been tweaked up to 4.8 GHz. All of this at 1.24 volts fixed. Additional tweaks were locking the BCLK to 100 MHz instead of the dreaded 99.8 and tweaking the CPU light load to mode 1 and changing the CPU load line calibration control to mode 3. Ah yes, we all need a silent PC in our lives. For this first test, I tried to make the room as silent as possible and I used my trusty Android phone to record the audio. I also reduced my case fan speed so I could capture only the CPU cooler's noise. Thanks to a sound meter app, I recorded both the minimum and averages of the decibels. It is best to use headphones for this one, and I'll let you guys decide whether it is loud or not. Here are the recordings. The next test is letting the CPU cook. Using Cinebench R23, I ran a throttle test for 10 minutes. 
and so far the overclocked CPU is not overcooked throughout the run. Honestly, I am very happy that it was able to hit acceptable temperatures without throttling. Now you may be asking, where is Prime 95? And to be honest, that software will make the CPU hit up to 230 watts and temps would spike up to 100C easily. Literally, the firm mark of CPUs. Ah uh, yes, I like to save the best for last, games. I selected a few games that would like to dine on the 13600K. Games like Cyberpunk 2077 and Minecraft are good picks to see if the CPU can run. And for the special guests, we have Emulation. RPCS3 and Xenia will be featured in this test as well because emulating a console can take a fair amount of CPU power.
Nice drafting. This CPU cooler is really good for the price. If you want to shave off a few dollars, you can always go for the Peerless Assassin 120SE. But overall, this cooler is cheap and powerful. After a few weeks of use, I would recommend this to anybody building a new PC or deciding to swap out their coolers. Thank you guys so much for watching this review, and I'll see you all next time.